And I just want to touch back, I guess, back on the the hundred k on your head at the moment, because it seems like you you very much wanted. It be like that sometimes. Like, that shit don't change how I think or move. I'm straight. I'm a normal person. But I guess most people, when they when they hear, oh, you, he'll be dead by the end of summer, pe- people would get anxious and nervous by the, by hearing that about themselves. How does that make you feel? No, I'm straight. I'm not anxious. I'm not nervous. I'm over cool. Can you see why people would want you dead? Nah. They just talking just to me talking. It ain't no specific reason. They just upset right now. It be like that when they hate on you. If you don't got no haters, that means you ain't doing nothing wrong. And um, what do you make of the, the hundred grand situation? I don't care. Shut sure, that shit up their ass. I don't give a fuck. Kiddo, could you tell me what your childhood was like and where you grew up? I grew up in Chicago, Illinois. And my childhood life was good. And who did you grow up with? What family members? My mother, my grandmother, and my little brother, pre boy. Um, and where, where was your dad at that time? My father was around when he was in the streets. Um, as well, kiddo, what was your education like? I made it to a junior high school, but I, that's when I dropped out. Uh, and what did you want to be when you, when you was in school? I wanted to work with computers. I wanted to be a technician. What made you change that decision? I changed that decision when I wanted to be in the streets. Like, I felt like I wanted to live that fast. Like, that's the life that I wanted to live. So that's the life that I chose. But when I chose that life, I would put myself in a situation that I couldn't get myself out of. Um, and talk to me about the incident that happened, I guess, while you was at school. That, that changed your sc- school in life? Well, when I was in school, I liked the school, don't get me wrong. I used to do my work. Like, I was going to school, doing it every day. It's just, I felt like school wasn't for me. So I stopped going to be in the streets. And what was life like in the streets at 14 years old? I felt like I was happy. But it got its ups and downs though. Tell me about the ups and downs of being in the streets at that age as well. Well, having this ups and downs, like you gotta watch over your head. You gotta stay safe. You gotta provide for yourself. Because due to me being in the streets, like, you don't got that much support. So you only depending on your brothers for real. Like your mother or your father don't want their son in the streets. So I guess when you made that choice, how did your family react? Like, they was there for me, but I had to learn the hard way. When you say you learned the hard way, what do you mean? Like, you want to be in the streets, you got to provide for yourself. Like, ain't no more taking care of you. You not a part of that household no more. Like, you want to be in the streets, you choose in the streets, so you got to take care of yourself. You got to buy your own clothes, you got to buy your own food. You gotta make sure your self great. And I guess did part of you ever guess when you made that decision think maybe I maybe I shouldn't be doing this, I guess if that was the reaction that you got. No, I never thought like that. I never thought about like not being in the streets. Because that's what I wanted to do. The streets don't love nobody either. But I wanted to be in the streets. Maybe it's the, it was the fast life. Maybe it was the female, maybe it was the money. Maybe it was the cars. So now you're in the streets at 14. What was a daily what was a day in your life like at that age? So you've dropped out of school, you're in the streets. What would be a normal day for you at that stage then? Getting up in the morning, calling my brothers. I just want to chill with them, be around them. You know, and just have fun. We used to go out downtown, go to the restaurants. Walk the whole downtown, go to Navy Pier. Like, we used to do a lot. That was fun. Like, it wasn't all about just being in the streets. As well, kiddo. 
Tell me about the conviction that changed your life. I was charged with armed robbery with a firearm. And how old was you? I was 17 years old. And, and what did you get sentenced with? 21 at 50%. 21 years at 50%. Did that go to trial? No, I pleaded guilty. But that don't mean I was guilty. Well, pleading guilty, seeing you guilty. And when you got sentenced, because I guess when you're 17 years old and you, you hear those numbers, what goes through your head? I just knew I was going to have to do a long time. Like, it really wasn't too much going through my head. Like, I just knew, like, yeah, you're going to be going a while. I did 10 years and five months. I came home April 5th. I had 60 days on house arrest. I did my 60 days on house arrest. I was under my grill, so I was great. And my brothers used to call my phone every day. Since I'm off house arrest, I would do my grill every day. I would do my brothers every day. I pick up your calls from my brother pre boy. I guess just talk to me about the incident that you was charged off. So it was a house arrest, and what, what, what was the actual charge? What, what did they say that happened? I can't speak on that due to me being on parole. Um, and what was life like in prison at 17 years old? I really can't explain like, what life was like in prison because it's an everyday thing that you do. Come out your cell, get in the shower, get on the phone, eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, go back in your cell, go to sleep. That's an everyday thing, repeatedly. Don't nothing change. Or that you get visits, uh, mail, like anything like that. Don't really not change in jail. When you've been charged with twenty one years, is it? Um, at that stage, did you, any did you ever think maybe I shouldn't have gone down the streets, or maybe I should have just stayed in school? No, I ain't thought like that. I just did that time and came home. And what would you say was probably the worst memory you had while being in prison? Being around a lot of goofy ass niggas. That's the only worst thing. You were around all goofies. That's the only thing about it. Did you say would you say you learned anything from your time in prison? Hey, yeah, yeah, I learned a lot. What was the biggest thing? The biggest thing about learning in prison is time. Time is everything. To cherish every moment of this shit. Because you know what, I feel like when people hear that, that the fact that you still want to change a the thing, that they, they think that's crazy. That after you've been sentenced to 20 years and you still wouldn't change the fact that you wanted to be in the streets. Nah. But that don't mean nothing, though. That don't mean nothing. Just because I don't change. Like, that don't mean nothing. I don't got to change the thought about being in the streets. Well, I don't got to change the fact about being in the streets. As long as I'm doing something productive with my life, as long as I'm, like, willing to change. I'm willing to change. I'm not saying that I don't want to change. I'm not saying, like, I want to be in the streets for the rest of my life. I'm only 27 years old. I got a long way to go. A long way. That's crazy to think about that, bro. The fact that you, from 17 to 27 that you've just been in prison. In prison. That's insane. Doing the same shit repeatedly. It ain't nothing different you can do unless you can get on the phone, getting visits, getting emails. And one thing I want to ask about, I watched in another interview that you shared a cell with King Von. Yeah, I shared a cell with him. To talk to me about that, what was that like? I shared a cell with him for more. It was just a normal thing, just being in a cell with someone, just being in a cell with an individual, just being in a cell with a regular inmate. It wasn't nothing special about it. Because on the outside, was you was you two considered ops? Yeah, we was considered ops. I guess when you was put, put in a cell together, what what was that first day like? Normal, <laughs> normal shit. Just normal shit. It wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, wasn't nothing special about it. Like, did you clash heads at all? Was there any arguments between you? No arguments, no fights, no debates, 
No talking about no screen shit. We want on none of that type of time. But you said that's mutual respect. Mutual respect. All we was thinking about getting home. And we need to go home. We sit up in the jail cell. We feel like goofies. That's the only conversation we was having. We weren't having no conversation about no off shit, about no fights, about no altercations, about no shootouts. We weren't having them type of conversation. And as well, did you start writing your music while you was in prison? No, nah, I ain't writing not one song when I was incarcerated. Didn't write nothing? Nothing. So tell it to me, kiddo, about the day that you was released. The day I was released was April 5th. It was raining. It was raining when I got released. And what was that like? How did you feel? 10 years, that's not a joke. That shit felt amazing. <laughs> I felt free. I'm like, damn, I'm home after 10 years and five months. Everybody was happy to see me. I was happy to see everybody. I don't got to wake up to another nigga. I don't got to eat no jail food. I don't got to worry about nobody leaving out my life. I don't got to do none of that. I can wake up in the morning and eat what I want to eat. I can walk in my own crib when I want to walk out my own crib. Kiddo, what would you say is the, the biggest difference in those 10 years in the world that you noticed when you've, you've come out of court that was completely different to when you went in? Man, the biggest difference about life? Everything changed. Like, it's different out here. Because I got locked up 2012, November 14. A lot of change. What would you say is the biggest that you've noticed in humanity? Just coming home and not seeing the ones you lost. That's really the only feeling to me. And how long have you been home now? I've been home three months. Feeling me four months out. So you've been home four months now? Feeling me four. Um, and what are you doing with your life now, moving forward? Rapping. Do you see a way out of... Chicago or the, the trenches free rapping. Is that is that the goal? Yeah. I'm gonna make it out of the trenches too. Um what do you make of London gang life, kiddo? Or what do you know about gangs in London? I really don't know about too many gangs in London. But I used to watch like Netflix about UK, London. I read a couple of books about UK and London too. But I really don't know like the history of their gangs. Or what they asked him into. That's something I'm gonna have to look deep into. Kiddo, do you listen to much UK drill? And if so, what artist? No, I never listen to UK drill music. As well, touching on your music, you seem to have like a unique style with your music. Um, and I see a lot of people saying in the comments, you don't rhyme, but it's a unique flow. Will that ever change? Nah. Or it might, but I'm just being me. I'm just being myself. I don't gotta be like every other artist. I'm being myself. As well, kid, I've read multiple times that you've got like a hundred grand on your head currently. Um, and people said that you'll be dead before the end of summer. What, what, what do you make of that? I don't really get no fuck about what people say. I just left the internet talk. You don't know me. You don't know how I think. You don't know how I move. You don't know where I'm at. Yeah, you might know my first and last name because you know my first and last name because of YouTube. You know my first and last name because I've been at DOC. But you don't know me. I know as well, kiddo, in, in gang culture, snitching is a big no. But what would you do if someone killed a friend or a family member? Would you go to the police? Nah, I ain't going to the police. So if someone killed a friend or a family member, you wouldn't go to the police? Nah, I ain't going to the police. Like again, to, uh, the, the, the masses, that'd be almost insane. I ain't going to the police. Why, would, why, why not? Is it the case that... It's a, you're being labelled a snitch. Is that the main reason behind that? Don't talk to the police. That's the number one rule of the streets. We don't got nothing to say to the police. Nothing. And what would you say, kiddo, is the worst memory of your life? Going to jail. For 10 years and five months. And the biggest regret? Going to jail. Why do you think the crime rate in Chicago is so high? 
Um, and do you think there'll ever be an end to the violence here? It'll be an end. Eventually. If everybody just focus on getting some money. But right now, it seems like everybody focus on shit that don't need to be focused about. Because your music is, is very controversial. Your lyrics. Um, why do you feel the need to be controversial? Or, or why do you talk about, I guess, if correct me if I'm wrong, dead people in the lyrics, or is that not the case? I'm going to always speak on the dead in some type of form or fashion. Others did it. I do it. It's a problem. It shouldn't be no problem if I do it. Why is a problem? It, it don't matter if, it, if it's 2012, 2013, 2014, 15. It don't matter if, it, if it's 2018, 2020, 2021. That shit don't matter. Do you reckon you'll change that style or do you reckon it will continue to just be addressed in music throughout your career? Not necessarily. I'm not dissing. Like, it's a few songs that I got I'm not dissing. The songs that I'm dissing now, they just out though. I got someone that I'm not dissing nobody. And as well, you almost become the influence now as well. I feel like people are starting to listen to your music more and more. So I guess the younger generation are, are, are starting to listen to you a lot more as well. So I guess with that in mind, do you reckon the, the, the nature of your lyrics will change? Because at the moment, I guess, I wouldn't say the negative, well, well, but some of them would be de negative, I guess, especially when dissing dead people. But do you reckon you'll start delivering more of a positive message in these songs moving forward? Oh yeah, more definitely. I'm always give out a positive message. Always. Why would I not give out a positive message for the young? I'm not telling the young generation to be in the streets. I'm not telling the young generation to kill people. I'm not telling the young generation to go to jail. If they decide to listen to my music, that's what they want to listen to. That don't mean they in the streets. Kiddo, how does your involvement in the gang life impact your personal life and your relationships? A lot of a lot of my friends and family like they rather me do something else than be in the streets. What I want to be in the streets, like I was hard headed, like I was the type that that just didn't want to listen. I want to do everything on my own, like like no, nah, I'm straight. I got this. I'm gonna do this shit on my own. I don't need nobody advice. But that shit taught me the worst way. Not listening taught me the worst way. If you don't listen, like I said, you're going to be putting yourself in a situation that you can't get yourself out of. I never wasn't listening. Now I listen. I listen to everybody that's around me. If somebody tell me, man, don't do something, I don't do it. If somebody tell me, yeah, that's the right thing for you to do, I want you to do that. That's what I'm going to do. What made you make that change? I guess when you said you didn't listen to people before, why did you start to listen to people? I started listening to people because I feel like if someone love you or if they care for you, they not going to mislead you. Kiddo, what's the main challenges or risks with being an active gang member? What's the biggest risk of you being involved? There's always sacrifices that got to be made. Always. This shit chess. I tell everybody that every day. Life is like chess. Sacrifices have to be made. So every day you're going to take a risk. How many friends have you lost to prison? And I guess being crime, prison, murdered, how many friends would you say you've lost? I lost a few. I lost a few. I guess when any any of, any of those passed away, did you think about leaving the streets at that stage? No. Not one time. Not one time I thought about leaving the streets. I thought about revenge. Well, I never thought about leaving the streets. But do you reckon it's always going to be that, that consistent cycle then? So if, if I guess, someone kills a friend of yours, you want to get revenge, like if that if that continues happening, this will never stop? Like I said, I thought about revenge. I never said I was going to seek revenge. That's a difference. You sitting in the jail cell. So it's going to always be a thought. As well, being in your involved in the gang life, uh, snitching is a big no, obviously. Um, what are the consequences if someone snitches? 
Well, we both know the consequences. That's how we just can't speak of <laughs> It's well, kiddo. If you had one wish at this moment in time in your life, what would that be? Going back. Not doing as much time that I did. But me doing time, I'm straight. I was going to school in jail. Kiddo, if you could change one thing about your current circumstance, what would it be and why? I just want to make sure everybody's straight around me. That's it. I just want to take us out this shit. Ain't no wrong with me doing that. So I'm going to make sure I'm straight and everybody around me straight on every aspect. Every chance that I get. Um, how long do you reckon it's going to take you to get out? Have you got a, have you got a plan, a time frame of when you want to leave? It ain't going to take me too long. But I'm not leaving Chicago. It don't matter how big I get. Kiddo, are there any misconceptions or stereotypes about gang members? Yeah, yeah. They always think gang members going to jail. They always think gang members want to shoot and kill people. Hell no, just because you a game member, that don't mean that. I'm a game member, I'm a good person. I love, I care, I got feelings too. I'm human. That don't mean nothing. Why do you think there are such bad negative connotations? Or negative, why do you think people think gang members are evil? Because the shit that they hear. They always going off shit on the internet. Instead of just getting to know that person. In the gang culture, what's the hierarchy like? Like is there, a, like for a gang in Chicago, is it like a top man, the five men under, or is it everyone's on the same playing field? And if so, if there is at the top, how do you get there? No, I'm not able to speak on that. Where do you think you'll be, kiddo, in five years? I'm gonna be all the way up though. Big ass career. About like five, five, six car, fast cars too. I love fast cars. And what is what is your motivation at the moment? Taking me and my family out this shit, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it with this rap shit. I'm doing a hundred k in a day. Who not going to like take me out this shit? Too many rappers not doing that. I don't give no fuck if I can't ram or not. <laughs> I'm broke. Have you read the comments about people saying the rhymes? No, to be honest, I don't read no comments. I don't be having time for that shit. And I just want to touch back, I guess, back on the the 100K on your head at the moment. Because it seems like you're, you're very much wanted. How, how do you feel about that? It'd be like that sometimes. Like, that shit don't change how I think or move. I'm straight. I'm a normal person. But I guess most people, when they when they hear, oh, you, he'll be dead by the end of summer, pe people would get anxious and nervous by, the, by hearing that about themselves. How does that make you feel? No, I'm straight. I'm not anxious. I'm not nervous. I'm over cool. Can you see why people would want you dead? Nah. They just talking just to me talking. It ain't no specific reason. They just upset right now. It be like that when they hate on you. If you don't got no haters, that means you ain't doing nothing wrong. And um, what do you make of the, the hundred grand situation? I don't care. Shut sure, that shit up their ass. I don't give a fuck. So, kiddo, where are you from? I'm from Yamuni, 051. Where is that and what is that? 48th and Drexel, 51st College Grove. Um, what, what is that area like? It's nice over there, where they get treasured. And how did you get the name, kiddo? I can't even tell you how I got that name. It went from kiddo, kiddo to drill. Now since I'm home, it's 051 kiddo. Big Y. Getting that Remy, getting that Melly. And, and talk to me about, I think there's 
was it all five one milli uh, a good friend of yours um and it, correct me if i'm wrong but i believe he was was he murdered yes um and how did that impact you yeah i heard him that shit hurt him i'm still hurt that's why i have my brother but any laws impact me though that shit hurt me where was you when you heard that news i was incarcerated and what was your immediate reaction i was stuck shit that shit shocked me I already can't do nothing. I miss Bodo. And I guess well, the first thing, I guess, what was running through your head, was it revenge? The thought. Yeah, it was revenge. It was only a thought, though. After kiddo, have any of your friends or family been at risk because of your life? But more so family? Nah. No. Nah, what the fuck that going on? Do I affect my friends or family? That's on me. The same way I protect my myself and protect my friends and family. So after listening to your music, I heard that your partner stayed loyal for ten and a half years while he was in prison. How strong is the relationship now that you've come out of prison? Oh, she didn't do no ten years with me. I don't even know why everybody keep always saying that. She came a part of my life when I was like, yeah, some change, sure. Like, I ain't had nobody at that time. Like, everybody else, like, bro, bad on me. I had my brothers. They was making sure I was straight, but I wanted to talk to a female. When she came a part of my life, she was there for me. Phone, visit, video visits, mail. So when I say I'm not leaving my bed for nobody, like, I mean that. I don't give no fuck what we go do. Like, that shit don't mean nothing. I don't give a fuck what they talking about on the internet or none of that. Kiddo, was there any people or any friends who f completely forgot about you when you went to prison? No. No, my brothers didn't forget about me. But the ones that did forget about me, bro, they get into dick. Bro. Why do you think someone would? Or why did they? The ones that did stop talking? They loved because they wanted to leave. They loved because they was only thinking for themselves. Oh, um, bro. And be like that sometimes. We've been doing 10 years or five months. Everybody be saying, damn, that's a long ass time. But what's the difference from jail and being out here in these streets? 10 years in jail a long time. 10 years on the streets a long time, too. What's the difference? If you were part of someone's life, why leave? As well, kid, I guess, do you reckon there's a... Going to prison and being on the streets, do you reckon being in prison was almost potentially safer than being on the streets? Nah, same shit. The same way you can get in trouble in the streets, you can get in trouble in jail. The same way you can die in the streets, you can die in jail. So it's really not no difference. And apart from being sentenced, what would you say is another worst memory of your life? Being in the jail cell. That's the worst part. Just sitting there. It feel like you did. Now, what's it like mentally, I guess, do, doing all that time? It's an unexplainable feeling. I can't even tell you what it's like mentally. For real. On a serious note. That shit hurt. Like... I don't wear jail on nobody. Nobody. So, kiddo, with the ops at the moment, the older you get, the, what's the emotion that you have with them? Is it less hate, less hatred, or or is it the same? I don't got no emotions towards them, nigga. I don't care for them, nigga. Hate, that's a big-ass word. I don't hate no nigga. I just don't got no emotions. Do you reckon you could ever squash it? So the, the, these people that you have problem with, do you reckon that could ever be forgotten about and do you reckon you could ever be friends? Nah. Why? No friendships. Ever? Ever. 
this shit to a day of the world part. So there's nothing that could happen that could ever make that that change. Not, not even billion dollars. I should be away. Why is that though? So why? Because to a lot of people, a billion pounds definitely. I guess they don't say yes straight away. I'll drop it. It's just that this shit for help. But you know, it, it, these these beefs as well are created a majority of the time that they're from a different area. Yeah. But again, don't even that in itself a bit crazy that the fact that you'll dislike these people over here surely because they're from a different area. Like they could be the nicest people in the world, and if there's born on your block, there's a potential that you may have been friends. No, nah, it don't necessarily be like that. Majority of the people that we into it with and grow it. So is there is there ops that I guess? You went to school with or you knew prior to being in this life? We went to school with. You might be getting real ties with your ops. Cousin. Nephews. Uncles. All type of shit. Chicago just fucked up. It's all type of shit going on in Chicago. But I ain't in it though. As well, I was going to ask you about a few, a bit of slang, Chicago slang. Um, so I heard the word slide. What what would the slide mean? Slide. Because in London, that's not really a term. Slide. Slide. <laughs> slide. I'm going to just let them go for your rapper tell you that. I'm going to let them tell you about that definition. I can't even tell you nothing like that. <laughs> and what about a bet? Again, that's something that I'm hearing in Chicago. I'm hearing everyone say that everything that I say, all they say is bet. 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 Yeah. Man, I'm on my way. Bet. I got you, brother. Bet. <laughs> and there's th another term which I came across, which was backdoor. What does backdoor mean? Again, I'm going to just let them goofy ass rappers tell you that. <laughs> I'm going to leave that out to the rappers. I'm going to leave that out to them goofy ass niggas. They going to tell you all about it. But we don't play that back though shit. We don't play that shit at all. Correct me if I'm wrong then. So this is my assumption of what backdoor means. Is backdoor, I guess, a, a case of you, you go behind your friend's back and drop their location or do something that to put them in jeopardy or make them vulnerable? Basically. And what? What? And how frequent is that? Because for, for, to to ha for that to have a name or a title shows it must happen often. Not necessarily. I feel like someone like really hates you if they do something like that. They've been jealous of you from the very beginning if that happened. That's how I feel. And I guess as well, I guess, because so many people, because you're pretty much a wanted man outside at the moment, uh, to some degree. How, how does that make you feel? I'm sweet. I'm not worried about no type of shit like that. I'm not worried about nobody back doing me. Because I guess if if someone was in your shoes, me, that I'd be anxious hearing those things. I'm straight. I'm normal. I'm cool. I that shit don't phase me. <laughs> 